Hello. 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 <laughs> okay, so my name is Roy McCann. I'm uh, slightly related to what Jeff was saying. I work, um, this is about tech and programming, but then also there's intersections with sort of ethics and society. So, uh, this is introduction to open source and programming. So, if, you, if you're not <laughs> if you're not a coder, there, uh, I'm going to teach you some words that can I say it's all for a program that's a code or app, they're all the same thing. A developer, a programmer, somebody who makes code, programs, and then free software and open source are the same thing, and it's the same as Floss, we sort of work together freely for open source software. Just in case I say one thing on one side and then something else on another side. Um, so what is uh, open source? Uh, I like to call it computer hippies, uh, but it tends to work. So, uh, you know, everyone knows hippies, like, let's all give it away for free, man. And uh, now, sometimes some people try that and you're like, okay, I'm running out of stuff. But software, you can just uh, give it away because it doesn't cost it. Uh, oh, that looks good. Um, so, uh, that is what uh, open source is. It's piece of people who, you know, they make apps or software and uh, it's like, you, you can have this. You can do whatever you want with this. Well, sort of. You, you know, you can use it and you can run it and then you can give it to other people and we can all just share all our stuff. It sounds silly and it doesn't work, but... <laughs> <laughs> that is what it is. It doesn't work. No, it doesn't work. Okay, so, the other thing. Free. Free software. People thought, free software, that means it doesn't cost anything, right? No. So, in English, when we use the word free, it can mean two things. Free is in beer, which is like free beer, so it doesn't cost anything. Or free is in speech. Free speech. There's no restrictions on what you do and what you uh, uh, like, what you can do with it. But there's nothing to also cost. Um, so that this is where we free Libra open source software. Try to be doesn't mean no cost. So when we say open source or free software, that means there's no restrictions on what you can do with it. Again, that's all share or stuff. Uh, now a lot of stuff you give a lot of people the free software and stuff. It's available online for nothing. So it is. Coincidentally, often freezing beer. Um, but you can sell it. So, uh, examples of Linux, not Linux, free software, is Linux, uh, the operating system, which you can get in Ubuntu and uh, Debian formats. Um, there's Linux in Android phones as well, it's based on that. Um, web browsers like Firefox and Chrome is nearly mostly open source. Um, and then there's a lot of uh, programming languages, so uh, like you know, Python, Ruby, C compilers, all that sort of stuff. I think Java was eventually open sourced. Um, because, you know, program a lot of it's programmers writing other things for other programmers, so they tend to do a lot of open source stuff around if you're a programmer, like me, that's open source stuff for there. Um, but you'll find it in like any Android phone, it's based on, for example, free software. Um, the way it works, as I said, it's, um, the, uh, we do it, uh, copyright, we use copyright to, usually when you give, copyright says, uh, I can control, you know, if I give you a book or a film or a software, you can then, um, I, I can control what can be done with it. Can you copy or can you not? And usually they say no, all rights reserved. Uh, so we have sort of a hack of it, a hack of copyright, which is called copyleft, where we basically say copyright licenses that um, let you use it whatever way you want. Well, we let you use it to, um, if I give it to you, you are explicitly allowed to give it to somebody else, and give it to, and make money out of it, or make a derivative work out of it, and stuff like that. You don't even have permission. But, because I kept saying there's no restrictions. There is a restriction. Nearly all of them, roughly, sort of say you have to pass it on. So if I give software to you, and I say you are allowed to give this to whoever else you want, the person you give it to, you also have to give them the permission to do whatever else they want with it, and stuff like that. So you have to, I'll share it with you, but as long as you share it with, everyone you share it with, you let them share it with. So that's how, it, it, um, how we basically have a hippie commune utopia where everyone can share everything because we use copyright law to enforce that yes, you're allowed to share it, but I'm allowed to share it. Uh, yeah. um, you're allowed to share it, from, use it for me, but I'm allowed, you know, you have to leave, leave everyone else use it. You can't get outside the hippie community. Um, so, that is free software, and that's open source, and, um, you know, okay, does it work? Why do people use it? Uh, why do people use open source? Various reasons why open source software tends to be, so there's advantages. So, vendor lock-in. Uh, you have, say, a document that you've done in a um, uh, word processing thing and it's only work open in that format, you know, so you can't move it to something else and then the new version of the software comes out and you can't 
use your old files or something like that because the format has changed and things like that. And that's kind of sort of annoying and so they force you to upgrade and then once you upgrade then the person you give the document to has to have the same version and all that sort of nonsense. That's much less common in open source because again we're all a big hippie sharing commune so uh, we don't tend to do that. <laughs> um, so open source, another advantage is if you are a say, well anyone but it's been great for small companies and small organisations, licenses. You're like oh do you want to copy? Here you go, here you go, here you go. Do we have licenses for that? What are these licenses? I don't care, just take it as much as you want. There's a lot of um, paperwork you know to care about, I've done that a bit. Companies I've worked for were a small company, like, let's just start a new server, new database. Do we need a license? No. Hey. So that's because, you know, if somebody gives you a copy of the software, you're allowed to do whatever the hell you want with it. Um, now, you have the source code, which allows you to, uh, and you can change it, and you can make your, a new version, and you can fix it. So you can fix problems that you might have in it. And it's all based on what you yourself can do. So, uh, you know, if you, if you had a phone, and you were like, oh, I think it should do such and such when something happens and you might talk to Apple or Google and they'd be like, yeah, yeah, sure, we'll get back to you and you're only a small person and, you know, they're giant corporations, they don't care. <laughs> um, or alternatively, you want to take, you wish the software to something that was totally different from how the people who made the software, they, they want to go in a different direction with using the software. Uh, you're basically at their mercy. If they say no, you're like, ah, shucks. But with open source, you are able to do it yourself because you have the source code and if you have programmers, you could just say, right, uh, this is the thing that somebody's made, and we want to add this button or whatever. Uh, so you can do that. And there's absolutely nothing stopping you, and you have all the source code, uh, except just what you can do. So there's a lot of flexibility and freedom there. <coughs> um, one of the main reasons open source was, um, free software was initially started is, you know, <coughs> if you have a bit of software, you should be able to look at it and look at how it works so that you can uh, learn how it works and improve yourself and get a better software and better programming. So that's the other reason. Um, because you can learn yourself. And then uh, technical superiority. Sometimes open source software can be technical. There is um, there's a theory about that that like open source software does tend to make things better code. You know, this I have a winky smile. I have a smiley face now. Okay. Um, so which leads me on to the uh, so why do people who make software why do they give away all their work for free? Uh, why do the developers and uh, release software and contribute to software and give away their time for free to help make something? Um, as I said, great big hippie sharing community. Sharing is good. Ask your mother. Your mother said sharing is good. So that's all sharing. Why not? Seriously. Right. Um, as I said, if you're using physical things, like if I have a bar, I'm like, hey, all the beer is free, lads. You know, it's like, that's not going to work because I have to buy the beer. Software doesn't work like that. Or if I have an apple, I'm like, I'll give you an apple. So I have to give him an apple, right? I couldn't have to give him an apple. Right? And then you don't have an apple. So that sucks. Software, though, you can just copy it. Copy it as many times as you want. So it doesn't matter how many times you copy it, because it doesn't take anything away from you. So I can share it with anyone. Um, so, uh, since the, the main reason for sharing everything uh, isn't great, uh, doesn't really apply to software, why not just do it? Um, ethical reason, of course, uh, you should be allowed to help your friend. Your friend is stuck, you should go, here, I'll help you if you want. That was one of the other reasons the free software started up. Um, so that's one of the reasons people uh, contribute to free software, because they think, yes, sharing is good. People should share. Um, another reason, this is sort of more the free software side, than the open source side is um, sort of technical superiority. Uh, as in, it helps you make better the technical reasons why people contribute and uh, give to open source. Um, so, well, the main thing, you give your code away for free, uh, and then other people will hopefully, random strangers in the internet or what have you, the community, will then fix it, fix problems, and send you back to you. So if you're a company that makes software, suddenly you have people who will work for you for free. So this is nice. Uh, if you make software. <laughs> of course you have to give them software for free, so you know. Um, when you open off open software, like as in open it out and give the source code out to people to look at, uh, they'll might fix it free. But then also you'll have more people looking at the code. Uh, you might fix bugs. This is uh, Linus's law in the code. Many eyes make all bugs shallow. So if more people are looking at things, they will figure out uh, how um, how to fix a problem, or you know, you'll have because you don't. Some creative person will come up with a unique problem, solution to that one problem you have. So in theory, if you get all these people working together, then you know the one person will fix your problem, and you'll have good software. And um, related as well, communities, enthusiastic people who want to help with the code. Um, since like you're not a big giant corporation that's trying to sell them something, you're like, no, I'm giving away the code for you for free. People kind of want to share with you and want to work. If we're all on a level playing field where everybody's helping each other, you know, we're not a company that's got quarterly profit margins and you know you're helping making the shareholders rich. 
you know, you're sharing with. So, since you're giving away for free, people work for you for free. Um, Simple to this, again, why well, release uh, open source software? Uh, it's very, if you use open source, uh, you're benefiting from open source, so why not just kind of help give it away as well? You know, somebody gave you something, so why not give something else, you know, pay it forward, kind of thing. Um, due to software being easy to share, it's, you know, there's much less reasons to do it. Open source has been around a very long time. I have two slides on history there. I'm going to go back and look at this um, It was originally founded sort of in the mid-80s, sort of, you know, that's where you know, all your software licenses that are relevant come from, the GNU project, all these kind of things. In the 90s, a lot of the Linux stuff was founded and was starting up, things like that. Um, and then around, you know, again, 2000s, more stuff happening. It's quite interesting there. Apple wanted to release their browser Safari, so they took an open source project, KHTML, did things they wanted to do with it to change it, made it better. And a few years later, Google wanted to use uh, their own browser for Chrome, so they just took the Apple WebKit stuff. So you can have big corporations that are benefiting from, you know, oh, I can take the software and make it better, this is goes, oh, I can take that software and make it better. Uh, everyone's sharing, and everyone just have to reproduce the work. Um, open source has obviously, and free software has spawned a whole pile of open culture things. Things that are like, again, let's all share stuff around because it's, you know, software. Not software. Data, it's not physical goods. So we have Wikipedia, uh, as you all know, is the encyclopedia. Again, it's a similar model. Uh, lots of people coming together to try to work on things collaboratively, you know. Uh, I know a lot about this topic, so I'll write the Wikipedia article first. Uh, open source software is like, I know a lot about, you know, opening image files. So when we need a web browser that opens image files, I'll do that bit. So everyone working together. Um, open source app for maps. Um, you can get open source music, Creative Commons licensed music on Gemendo. Um, Flickr has a lot of Creative Commons license, sorry. Creative Commons was something else that we started up to write licenses uh, for like artistic work and for films and books and things like that. So you can do a few tweaks because a lot of the open source licenses are very sort of, the software code for this program must be given to such and such. And if you have a book, that doesn't really make sense. So there's Creative Commons license. Some sort of them are Creative Commons stuff. Hackerspaces and Makerspaces. We're also all about the sharing, all about the giving out. Not giving out, giving away to each other. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, speaking of giving out, a lot of uh, people within the open source world can give out to each other. So, <laughs> there is a bit of that about. So, that's all great for you say that's absolutely fantastic. I want to get involved in open source software. What do I do? You can use free software. You can get, again, if you're using Android, you're using it already. You can get a bunch of Linux. You can use an open source browser like Firefox, kind of Chrome. You can contribute to open content stuff yourself, Wikipedia or OpenStreetMap. And guarantee you there's almost something somebody can add to Wikipedia or something somebody can add to OpenStreetMap, you know? It's probably one thing somewhere. Uh, if you write your own software or code, why not release it as open source? Just put it on the likes of GitHub. I've done that a few times. You put something on GitHub, and two years later, you're looking at it and you're like, Jesus, people are actually using it. What the hell? <laughs> 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 you kind of forget about these things. Uh, and then they can pay you because there's all these things that are broken. <laughs> you know, you make your own. Or actually, sometimes what's happened is they, they, they have made their own thing. You're like, wow, there's all these forks. It's like a child that's connected to the world and has found it, and comes back a few years later with a whole large family. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> So you can just do that if you're a coder. Um, there are a lot of resources for sort of helping people getting involved with open source and kind of mentoring you through it. Other big projects like GNOME or Mozilla will have that. GNOME is the desktop environment for like Linux stuff. And Mozilla makes Firefox, obviously. Uh, and then Open Hatch is another one about sort of general open sourcey. Um, that's open source stuff. But it doesn't have to be all just code. So obviously, Creative Commons stuff works with. Uh, you know, encyclopedia maps and all that, but um, within an open source project, like a software project, there's not just code. So who's going to design it, who's going to document the program, who's going to, you know, do any of the graphics, uh, help users who have problems, like, you know, how do I do X, Y, Z, or you, whatever, 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 uh, writing bug reports. Um, you can go to meetups that we have, like, so you've got your user group, over to Ireland, Python, Ireland, programming things, that kind of thing. Because um, you can meet the community, these are enthusiastic individuals who want to help people online for free. So, any questions? That's my brief intro to open source. <laughs> any questions? Yes, question? Yeah, I'm just wondering, um, I'm not a member yet, but I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get the money together to do it. Cool. Um, is it possible for you to put this somewhere, your, your slides somewhere where yes. we could look at them? These, yeah, I'll put these slides, on, slides online. Are they open source? Where would they be? <laughs> uh, I haven't put them online yet. Yes, I will make them creative comments. Um, we'll check. link off the blog post. Yeah, we'll, we'll, yeah. yeah check off the blog page, you would? Talk.ie. Yeah, yeah. Okay. go there in a few days. Anything else? Yeah, I've got a question for you. Do you think if the open SSL library was closed source, we wouldn't have Heartbleed? No one would know about it. 
<laughs> no one would know. Actually, that was found by non-open SSL people. It was found by Google and a security researcher. Security researcher, they basically took the code, found this thing, and went, oh, that's interesting, and found the source of the problem. So would it happen? Maybe, maybe not. Uh, there's plenty of problems um, where open source, where closed source software has had massive security vulnerabilities as well. Uh, the iPhone 1.1 release used to be hackable by loading a certain image because there's a flaw in how they loaded images. Uh, so you could go to jailbreakme.com and it would jailbreak your phone. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, and, but the fact that it was open source did help make help people discover it. it was found by two teams individually, the security researcher and then a team in Google, uh, around roughly the same time. So, would it have happened? Maybe, maybe not. Would it, have, would it still be around? Probably. It wouldn't have been found. So, yes? Yeah, I just want to know that like, I was reading recently about them, um, there was a uh, developer for for, for JP Morgan, who said that he'd been instructed to use what was previously open source um, to solve certain problems and then copywriting that material afterwards. So what do you think about like protecting open source, like protecting it in terms of how you stop people taking something that is open source and making it closed so that it's not... That's illegal out. and impossible. Any <laughs> lawyer who said that this is now not open source uh, is Wrong. <laughs> so it's not a thing, it's not something you can actually do. No, no. The, um, the, 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 the license. license. Yes. Yes. license. Yes, but like, you always have to release, even BSD, you'd have to release no. the original version. No. No. Oh, okay. You just BSD. have to say that there is code license under BSD. No, it's, it, yeah, but the original, like, if you took a library, don't you have to release the original library? No. No. Did you? No? Okay. Okay, well, so. Uh, if you distribute, no? Okay. Well, well and it was the GPL ones and the BSD ones that yes. are just free, free, free. And M MIT and is even more permissive. Yeah. Well, so, it, okay, good point. It depends on the license you use. A lot like, um, some of them can, like, if you use, like, the GPL, for example, which is my main default one, because, sure, why not, uh, it does explicitly say, if you make a derivative work on this, it has to be open source. I like, essentially, free software. So it has to be under the same license. Um, so in terms of protecting it, I mean, you can't, if you've used like a license that does make the driver work one do that, which the GNU ones are the main license that do that, you can't, like you can't, any, any lawyer who says, oh no, that's closed source now, it's like, no, that's not true. <laughs> we'd, so, they would stand up and if you actually went through a court case, they would be very quickly made clear that that was not bad. Yeah. Pretty much, yeah. Which now the main what happens then that way is a lot of companies will basically not touch it with a ten foot pole, and they're just like, oh, we don't do any of that because uh, we're scared of the legal thing. So which, you know. Well, there's also there's also an option of uh, dual license. So even if something yes. is GPL, you can request from the author to get a different license, so you pay for it. Yes, that well that's true. Now uh, one of the problems is if you have a lot of people who've worked on the same code together, uh, the license is. Like you basically might have to contact hundreds of thousands of people, <laughs> which like OpenStreetMap changed its copyright license from Creative Commons to uh, Open Database license, and basically every, loads of people to be contacted, and we started to go around and just delete loads of stuff. So because it was no longer, and unless they agreed to it. So some of the big projects, like mm -hmm. I'm sure maybe Chrome or Mozilla, they say you have to assign code to the organisation, which for practical reasons make that easier. But Basically, yeah, you can sometimes get a dual license, but if it's got stuff from other people, you can't, so it's complicated. <laughs> so, how do you do, how is it decided who gets to choose, can you do a license or, or something? So, anybody who made any contribution to GPL, <coughs> you can that from the how it works, or? Well, no, if, like, if you contribute to a GPL code, yeah. it would, you, that has to be GPL. Yes, but later on, if the, if I contribute to an, the one <coughs> GPL, mm -hmm. and then the author says, I'd like to do a license, it will, or someone who gave me a lot of money? Yes. Does mean that they have to contact me and get yes. micro? Yes. Okay. And if you say no, it's a massive headache. <laughs> because they need to somehow, I think, make it so you can't, uh, so your code isn't in there. And if you got in there early and know the stuff is built off your stuff, it's just like massive headache. So we'll leave it there. And if you have any more questions, you can talk to Rory at the break. Mm -hmm.